Denver Homeless Hotel, the Doubletree Hotel. It's had seven deaths since January, including, including a double murder. What do we got going on in Denver? We've got shenanigans happening in Denver. Let's get into it. Here we go. I almost feel kind of bad for Denver because I keep picking on Denver, but Denver is just, Denver is just lobbing up topic after topic after topic. None of them particularly good. It's like Seattle. There's always something good happening. I mean, there, there is, there, there's good stuff happening everywhere. You can, you know, glass half full, glass half empty. Well, I like to point out the half empty stuff because, you know, it's not reasonable, but Denver has just been on a roll. Um, as far as incompetence goes, I would say Mike Johnston, I, I would say he's, he's, he's definitely top five of incompetent out there. I'd put Mike Johnston out there. I put him up there with, um, let's go Brandon Johnson, Beetlejuice. You betcha. Um, how about mayor of Portland? Um, <laughs> mayor Ted Wheeler, that guy, that guy, he just, yeah. But no, Denver, homeless hotel, seven deaths since January. You, you imagine council meetings that are going to come up? Hey, I mean, you know, local officials are going to be, yeah, you know, we've had some issues. Yeah, you had seven people die in the hotel, two more double murders. What's up? What's up with that? Well, yeah. Here's the other story that just happened. This is another one on top of this. Woman shot inside former hotel, converted to shelter in North Denver. That happened last night. That happened last night. Woman could, maybe she got shot in the leg. I don't know. This is Denver, though. You're going to have to have a different stat map, right? So the ongoing theme here is um, maybe you don't want to hang out at the double murder tree in Denver. Podcast, I think it was last week that I did, was the um, credit union that just Boom, shut down. And, um, you know, given the fact that they are next door, I think it's, uh, I'm going, I'm address here. 4,000, whatever the street is, is the address of the double homicide (laughs) uh, hotel. And then 4040 is the address. And um, I'll remember the street name, but it'll probably be in the article here. It's literally next door. It's next door. So the credit union just, overnight shut down. And given the fact that another shooting happened last night, I do not blame them. I do not blame them. I mean, this is just insanity. This is insanity. But look at this hotel. When you see an aerial map of this hotel, it's huge. Hundreds and hundreds of room rooms. It's not like one of those, um, I want to say travel lodge, but a Marriott down in the South. Uh, in Texas and and in Oklahoma, like the ones I stay at in Oklahoma City, you've got like kind of this set format for what a hotel looks like. They're boxy. They try and make them look, you know, almost European now. And they got the portache out front, which is just a carport. And um, most of them end right about here on, uh, on, they're just kind of this box and this rectangular box. This one is a big one. I mean, you see the aerial and you're like, oh my gosh, that is a lot of rooms. So, you know, what could go wrong when you put several hundred homeless people in one area and there's low barriers of entry, meaning you don't have to take a drug test. You don't have to do anything. You just, there's your key. Be safe in there. Yeah. Seven people dead. I'll, I'll talk about this one for just a second. The shooting occurred inside the former hotel in Central Park, despite increased following security following a, uh, despite increased security, following a recent double homicide. So you've got a double homicide, you've got a shooting last night. That lady is supposed to be in okay condition, but um, yeah, yeah. And then you've got thousands of illegal immigrants that are going to work their way to Denver. I'm sure it'll work out fine. It'll be fine. It'll be good. Federal government's going to have to step in and cough up, uh, cough up some money at some point, aren't they? Because all these, all these virtue signaling uh, sanctuary cities, they're going to go tilt just like this hotel is going tilt right now. Because, you know, what would happen if you put several hundred whacked out homeless people into a hotel altogether? Yeah, you're seeing it happen in real time, in real time. It's, it's, it's funny 
how few news outfits are covering this story because ooh, yeah mainstream media oh don't point that out ooh, yeah ooh, yeah seven people killed ooh, yeah what hey now i mean they're mostly peaceful they're mostly peaceful i mean yeah they do a lot of drugs they've got hammers and machetes and whatnot but seven people have died at a hotel turned shelter for denver's homeless people since it opened in december according to the city's medical examiner this is per the city's medical examiner right you know what's crazy is they consider somebody who dies to exit the homeless system you have exited into you know typically i'd say a casket but nobody gets buried in a casket anymore they get cremated right so they have exited the homeless situation. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, that's how the system works. Yeah. How many people did you have exit your program? Well, including the guys who got murdered. Oh, 14. Former Doubletree by Hilton Hotel. I'm sure Hilton is so proud of this. The former Doubletree, uh, Double Murder Tree by Hilton Hotel serves hundreds of homeless people under a campaign by Mayor Mike Johnston to move 2,000 individuals out of the city streets by the end of this year. How is that working out? How many murders? How many murders? Hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. How many people dead? Oh, how, how, how many was that? Oh, okay. That figure counts the thousand plus homeless individuals who moved into temporary shelters, including at the former Doubletree Hotel last year. The hotel located, okay, 4040 Quebec Street. Um, all right. I had uh, 4,000 as the, uh, 4,000 was the credit union. 4040 Quebec Street, right next door, came under a scrutiny following a, came under scrutiny. There was some concern about the double homicide. Came under scrutiny. We're putting a little bit of emphasis on, on this double homicide hotel. <laughs> following a double homicide on March 16th, when police said two victims were found dead inside a room. The medical examiner's office later determined they were shot to death. Oh, hey now. Ooh, yeah. In addition, five other deaths occurred at 4040 Quebec Street since January 19th. I'm sorry, what happened? Oh, yeah, five other deaths happened since January 19th. Do you think, do you think they might get some, you know, Denver National Guard there? Do you think they might get an emphasis patrol? Do you think they might get a Workers' Bill of Rights for the strippers? No, they won't get that. But what are they doing? Absolutely nutty, right? It's just nutty that this kind of stuff is going on. Ah, pack as many into a hotel as you can. We'll just see how it goes. We are seeing the fallout in real time of what happens when you do that. Because these people aren't, they're not sane. They're whacked out of their minds. They're willing to kill each other. They have zero issues doing that. The people want to say, well, they're just down on their luck. And if they could just get a couple of weeks of being inside a room, everything's going to work out. That is literally what housing first, you know, the ideology behind that. It's kind of like harm reduction. Hey, you're going to shoot up some heroin, at least have a clean needle. Yeah, that's harm reduction. All harm, no reduction. Let me give you a clean crack pipe because we don't want you. Let me give you some chapstick because we don't want you to get chap lips. Yeah, that's literally one of the supplies that was handed out. I think it was down in Portland. You got a, uh, you get your, uh, you go to a birthday and you get a birthday party. What, what is that? A guest bag? You know, a little bag of stuff. You get some chapstick if you're doing the, if you're smoking the crack, if you're smoking the meth, smoking the fetty down in Portland. The causes of death remained unclear, though the medical examiner said it is awaiting toxicology results. Yeah, I'd say by the look of that bullet hole there, that guy died by gunfire. That's how, that's how I would rule it. All right, next. What else you got for me? A day prior to the double homicide on March 15th, two other deaths were reported at the hotel's location, according to the records. It's, you know, I start to giggle and, it, it, and I giggle because it's so ridiculous. These are somebody's family members that are having their lives ended. Maybe they chose some, they had some really bad life choices somewhere in there. Maybe they're mental. Maybe they should be in a mental institution somewhere, but we don't do that anymore. Maybe they should be in prison. Yeah, maybe. Maybe they should be in a detox center getting cleaned up somewhere. They're not going to have that opportunity. Instead, we're just going to lump them all together in a hotel and call it good. Yeah, at least we'll get through the winter without somebody dying. Oh, never mind. Since January 19th. Three other deaths happened between January 19th and January 30th, the records also showed. 
The spokesperson with the mayor's office who contacted the Denver Gazette insisted not all deaths are related to the city's, get this, now for you Denver people, you know this name, All In Mile High program. All In Mile High. Anything to do with homelessness or drug addiction or whatever shouldn't have the word high in it. I understand. Denver's the mile high city and elevation over a mile high. All right. Yeah. All in mile high. What does that mean? What does that mean? And it's just, it's, that's terrible. That's just terrible. That's the name adopted by the Johnston administration. All right. It's the name ad- adopted by the Johnston administration for the mayor's campaign to end homelessness. All in mile high. To end homelessness? These people that get elected, I don't know. What's worse, the people that get elected or the people electing them? Yeah, it's tough, right? The city's homeless dashboard, which tracks exits. So now we're going to debate whether all the deaths are attributed to the homeless complex or not. So the city's homeless dashboard, which tracks exits from the city's all-in mile-high program, again, Shows that a total of nine people have died. Nine! Nine! Fantastic. I mean, we're, we've got progress here. This is very progressive. Earlier, the dashboard showed that six people have died. And the mayor's office said four of those deaths occurred at the former Doubletree Hotel. You got a lot of people dying. That's the bottom line, right? Of the seven deaths at the former Doubletree Hotel tracked by the medical examiner, there were three guests or visitors, the mayor's office said. Adding the city's homeless dashboard doesn't track deaths of people who are not part of the program. If you weren't in the Mile High Club, literally, in Denver, then they're not going to count you if you die. The medical examiner's office said it makes no distinction. Somebody dies, they die, we're going to count them. Seven dead, nine dead, whatever it is, per hotel, per hotel location, that's an incredible amount. I know we've got the... We've got the Morrison Hotel here in Seattle, which is just infamous for, I mean, it has had so much corruption and murder and the street out in front of it is just a train wreck, but it's supported by the homeless industrial complex, right? It's supported by this group of people who are like, yeah, I just got to save everybody and nobody's getting off the drugs. Nobody's getting off whatever. You know, we just created this super conducive atmosphere. Hey, let's put all the drug addicts together in a hotel. We'll just, you know, see how it goes because it's easier for us to get them, get them services. And now you are literally seeing the end result, which is seven murders, nine murders, whatever it is. A lot of people dying, right? Because that's what happens. These, these people don't give a rat's ass. If you know, if you're not paying them for the drugs, they take your drugs, you take their drugs. Who knows? Who knows what it's over? Right, you got a lot of that back and forth action going on, and that's why you see tents catch on fire so often. In Seattle, it happens all the time, and you'll hear somebody ah, there were it was a um, it was a drug payment you know argument. So somebody came over and torched a you know nylon tent. Not that hard to catch on fire. Not that hard to catch on fire. You got enough Looney Tunes, you know, hundreds of Looney Tunes running around in a hotel. Just run down the you know the hallway to. Did you guys see the video of the um, two cars in Atlanta? I think it was. They're just screaming down the freeway and they're literally shooting at each other. You can see the gunfire coming out of their windows and you're like, "Ooh, good Lord, that's not good. Nobody got hit. Median section got hit. But um, Atlanta, Atlanta's got some stories going on. They've got some crazy criminal activity happening right now. So. But Denver is one of the cities that I'm covering because, like I told somebody in the uh, premiere, each morning, if, if, if you haven't been following News for Reasonable People, each morning we premiere at 9 o'clock, we premiere a new video. And uh, we also release another video. Um, so we release two, Monday through Friday, and then one on Saturday, one on Sunday. But on the 9 a.m. premiere, I'm typically there. And somebody, <laughs> we were talking about Denver having pound for pound probably some of the craziest stories as far as homelessness, you know, just terrible decisions from the governor, ter- terrible decisions from the mayor of Denver, shouldn't have said governor, but, you know, governor as well. Just, you know, one event after another that give me podcast content for, for days, months, whatever it might be. 
So Denver has been a dark horse. I didn't used to read much about Denver because it just, it didn't have all of these stories coming out. But now with this hotel, I mean, I've got a solid three podcasts out of this alone, right? Because you don't have this in other areas. And it's because they chose a massive hotel. And you've also got an element in Denver that um, I've had a ton of people tell me, hey, Denver's host, Denver has really turned a corner. And by that, we don't mean in a, in a positive manner. Denver is really on the struggle bus as far as, you know, all the illegals not having enough housing, kicking people to the curb, people living in tents, just the crime, the, the overall stuff going on. Like we used to do to both, you know, San Francisco, Portland, and Seattle, and Chicago, and New York City. Talk about those cities because they've got content for days as well. And the common theme is they've all got similar leadership. Hmm. Yeah. What was that podcast that we read by uh, Republican leadership just a you know podcast or two ago? Yeah. Shutting down the squatters' rights. We're going. We're going in opposite directions, aren't we? Just opposite directions. That's what it feels like, anyway. Is it civil war? I know everybody wants to jump on that topic. Is that what this is? Is this a civil war happening? I mean, when you start to look at all the stories and you're like, okay, that's that's not good. That one's not good either. That's not good. Got some wild stuff happening. I don't know if it's a civil war. I don't know what it is, but I know it's happening. And I'm going to podcast it for you. And that's what we're doing. All right, that's it for me on this segment. Thank you so much for being here. Love to have you as a subscriber. Do all that good Facebook stuff, and I will see you on the next one. Thanks again for being here. See you soon. Bye for now.